wanna drink a cold beer and play me some poker. This weekend, just a little Texas hope. I flop the screen, flush it like chick. I be going all in if anybody bet. I just wanna drink a cold beer and play me some poker. College Station delivered an unforgettable Halloween weekend. I've never been before, but I'm sure it won't take me very long to come back. Trace and Gage opened a poker room down here, which was the whole point of me driving down in the first place. They're spreading a 5-10 match the stack game. I'm in for $1,200 to start. And before I can even get my camera set up to record, I run my pocket aces into Dylan's pocket kings. He was on my right, I had position on him, and we got it all in pre. I only had $1,200, I'm not exactly sure why I didn't come in for a full three grand, but that's neither here nor there. Let's see if we can double up and get close to that three grand with only $1,200 invested. The flop comes pretty clean, the turn is a brick, and the river seals his fate. We are taking down that $2,400 pot straight out of the gate. And now let's finally get our camera set up and move into the first hand of the night, pocket sixes from under the gun. There's a $25 straddle on by a gentleman named Justin. He drove all the way from San Antonio to play in this 5-10 match to stack game. So I'm gonna raise him up and put a little hurt on his uh, gas fund here and raise it up to $100. Justin is going nowhere with his hand. He's in the straddle. He didn't drive all the way to fold for $100. In fact, he puts in the call. We are going off heads up out of position to a flop. Flop comes King Jack 5 Rainbow and I'm first to act. There's $215 in the middle. I think a C bet is in order and I fire out for $100. Justin puts in the call. Sure, he could have a king or a jack, but he also could have a hand like queen 10, ace queen, maybe a hand like ace four or ace three of hearts. So when he puts in the call, I still could be ahead and the four of spades really shouldn't change too much. There's $415 in the middle. And I think I like continuing for all of those reasons. Gotta go large here. I go around two thirds the size of the pot which gets the job done and we are taking down the second hand of the night. Things are going pretty swimmingly so far. I look down at ace five of diamonds from the small blind. Gavin raises it from under the gun to $30 and Trace, one of the owners here of the card club, he three bets to 105. Action folds around to me in the small blind and I decide to come in for that sneaky, sneaky four bet with the ace five suited. We're blocking pocket aces and ace king. We're also blocking pocket fives for what that's worth. We can back into a straight. I like my hand here. The only thing of note is that when under the gun raises and then plus one three bets, those are some pretty strong ranges. So maybe ace five of diamonds would be better suited if it was cutoff versus hijack or cutoff versus button. But let's see what happens in this exact spot. Sure enough, my suspicions are confirmed. Gavin from under the gun five bet jams for $1,100 and Trace decides to call off. I'm getting out of there. So be it, I am blocking pocket aces. Uh, it's likely one of them has a very strong hand. We fold our cards, but let's just see what happens exactly in this hand. As you can see, Gavin had queens, Trace had ace king, and they run it out with a king coming on the flop, and Trace is gonna take it down on his home court. He owns this room, he owns this table, he's taking down that pot, nice hand, sir. All right, Trace finds himself in this one again. The $25 straddle is on. He raises up to $60 and the cutoff puts in the call. I decide to put in the call with my favorite hand, pocket sevens. They never let me down. I decide to put in the money and we are going off heads up to a flop with Trace. Let's see if we can give him some run bad. Oh my gosh, look at this flop. Queen, queen, seven, bang, we flop a boat. Better than that is he could have any queen, right? And he's just gonna be in a world of hurt. I check it over to him, he fires out for $100, and I am not gonna spring the trap just yet. I decide to put in the call, bring us off to the turn which comes a brick, the five of hearts. Now I'm hoping somehow he has pocket fives. I really don't want him to have queen five or queen seven. Not many combinations of that left in the deck. I check it over to Trace for a second time, and somehow he checks behind. That is not good news. Maybe he's slow playing and trying to trap me. That's all I can hope for at this point. But when you have sevens full, you wanna get some money in against a queen. So when the river comes the four of clubs, I have to make up for that missed street of betting on the turn. There's $415 in the middle. And I look over at Trace's stack and he has a good amount behind around $1,600. 
quickly pause the video here you guys and let me know down below what sizing do you go for? Do you go around $200 just trying to get value from a hand like pocket 10s or pocket 9s? Do you overbet here and make it $600 or $700 and try to target maybe a queen if he has one or still those hands like tens and jacks maybe they would uh, pay it off for an overbet if I made it look like a bluff or do you go for the jugular and just rip it all in and hope to god that he has a queen that's what I decided to do I got extremely greedy here and I ripped it all in for a 4x pot size bet is this ever a bluff you guys tell me as you can see I have sevens full of queens so I'm not really sure how well I'm balancing this and Trace goes into the tank and says, if I would have checked it over to him, that's what he was going to do. The good side of that would be if he had a queen and he'd do that for value. However, if he was saying that because he would have tried to bluff me, now well, we just lost out on a lot of money. So I'm definitely hoping he has a queen in this spot. And he takes a while in this one here and ultimately says he is not good enough to fold his hand. Oh. Uh, I'm not good enough to fold. I have my hat which is exactly what we want to hear. He puts in the call, the 4X pot over bet, gets called. I turn over my hand saying I have the hand that's on my hat, pocket sevens, and he shows us queen eight of spades. What a disgusting flop. Sevens full of queens, trip queens for Trace. His hand is going down in flames, and we get paid for a $1,600 river bet there and going to take down that $3,700 pot. What an absolute crazy hand. If you guys have not already purchased the Pocket 7s hat, this is the best marketing for it. I'm wearing it on my hat. I flop 7s full. Sorry, Trace, if you're watching this. Queen's down in flames. But there is a link down below to my Pocket 7s hat. Maybe I'll have to send Trace one and he can have some run good for himself. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to Jackson, a freshman here at Texas A&M, who recorded a lot of the table footage you're seeing in this vlog. I left his Instagram down below and tagged it in parts of this video. Just wanted to say a huge shout out to Jackson. Thanks, man, for capturing that $3,700 pot for me. All right, with some newfound chips, remember we only bought him for 1200 here and we're up to 3700 in our stack. We're going to battle once again, Justin with 3800 in his stack straddles it to 25. I come in for a raise to $75, to which he says, no, 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 we are three betting that to 300. We are both playing super deep here in this 510 game. I decided to put in the call, try to flop myself a set and proceed from there. The board does not accommodate. It comes king 10, nine with two clubs. However, I have position on Justin, so when he checks it over to me, I think this is an interesting spot. Could go for a bluff here and try to get him off a hand like 9-8 or 9-7 suited. Maybe he has ace-queen, ace-jack and would probably fold to one bet, but that's a little bit ambitious. I'm going to check behind on the flop and see what happens on the turn. When the turn comes a 7 of spades and Justin checks it for a second time, it appears that he does have one of those high card type of hands, maybe pocket eights, pocket jacks, pocket fives, something like that. And if we can get eights or jacks to fold on this board, that would be an absolutely massive win. So when he checks it over to me for a second time, I smell weakness and I'm going to pounce. I fire out for $400, which is around two thirds the size of the pot. He could still call me with a hand like ace queen or ace jack of clubs. Hands that I have beat but still have some equity, so I kind of like this $400 bet. Getting some better hands to fold, maybe getting called by worse, and I think he should play pretty face up from here on out. He decides to put in the call, so no fear. The five of spades comes on the river, and Justin checks it for a third time. If we want to get some of those better hands to fold like 10-8, maybe pocket eights or pocket jacks, going to have to go for another bet here. $1,400 in the middle, and I decide to size up, putting maximum pressure on any of those one pair type of hands, and fire out for $1,200 to go. Justin doesn't snap fold, which isn't great news, because that would obviously be ace queen or ace jack. Now I'm putting him on a one pair type of hand. Since I have pocket sixes, the only things that make sense are pocket eights, pocket jacks, maybe a hand like queen 10, jack 10, maybe 9 8, 10 8, all of those good things. And those hands have to fold to this $1,200 bet, right? 
wrong. Justin decides to put in the call. He was a little bit stronger than most of the hands I mentioned, but pocket jacks make an incredible call here. I thought he was a good player from just observing his table play, but after he calls my bluff here with pocket jacks on a king 10 9 7 5 board, now my suspicions are confirmed. Justin, definitely a great player from San Antonio. Nice answer. Taking down that $3,800 pot, I'm giving back some of the profits I took from Trace and handing it over to his neighbor, Justin. All right, we didn't drive three hours by ourselves down to College Station. Our buddy Andrew from TCU, he decided to come along with. You guys might have seen him in a few of the intro shots. This hand is against Andrew. A little bit of friendly fire in this one. Let's see who comes out on top. I straddle it to 25, Andrew from the plus one raises it up to $90, and Dylan on my right puts in the call as well. I decide to complete, it's only about another 65 more dollars to go. 8-6 suited seems pretty great, and the flop comes queen 7-6 with two clubs. Dylan checks to me, and I check it over to Andrew. His uh, plus one range is going to be very strong. Over pairs, pocket queens, he could have ace queen, king queen, and then a lot of his draws that are very strong would be like ace 10 of clubs, ace five of clubs. So no sense in betting into Andrew. He fires out for 125, and uh, Dylan gets out of the way. Now when we make bottom pair, we also have a backdoor straight draw. It's against Andrew. I will be out of position the rest of the hand, which isn't great. But still, I kind of want to see what happens on this turn. I decide to float him, put in the 125. Sure, I have bottom pair, but uh, most likely I am way behind Andrew at the moment. When I put in the call and the turn is not a great one, it comes a seven of clubs. Nothing for me to do other than check it over to Andrew, who pretty quickly checks behind. Now, we would be doing this for pot control with all of his ace queen, king queen, maybe even pocket kings without a club would decide to check this turn. So if the river comes another scare card, I probably could bomb it and get him off of a one pair type of hand. However, that is not the case when the six of hearts peels off on the river and we back ourselves into a boat. There's 525 in the middle. And in case Andrew somehow has a flush and was trapping on the turn, or in case he has a queen in his hand, I wanna go large here, make it look like somehow a bluff. 525 in the middle and I fire out for 450. And Andrew uh, probably takes two seconds before putting in one chip, indicating a call. I show him the bad news, 8-6 of spades is going to take down ace-queen of diamonds. So he had a monster, and uh, somehow, someway, the fish lucks out in this one. The blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. And sorry, Andrew, this squirrel is taking down a $1,400 pot. Ship it over to me, dealer. All right, three hands left to go in this one. We battle with Trace. Once again, from the low jack, he raises it up to $75. Action on me from the cutoff. Gotta come in for a three bet with a beautiful ace-king offsuit. I make it $250 to go. Trace puts in the call. We whiff the flop when it comes 10-4 deuce, and he checks it over to me. Could be checking behind, could be going for a C-bet. That's what I decide to do. 150 is the price if you want to call Trace, which he doesn't. He wants to raise it up to $400. At this point, he's representing some strong hands like pocket fours, pocket tens. He also could have ace five or ace three for a wheel draw. And then, of course, a lot of his diamond draws would want to raise this flop as well. However, if you look at my holding, I have the ace of diamonds in my hand. So I'm blocking all of his nut flush draws and all of his nut wheel draws, like ace five of diamonds and ace three of diamonds. So that reduces a lot of his hands there. And uh, yeah, I don't really know what I'm saying at this point, but all I know is I can't fold ace king with the ace of diamonds. I put in the call and let's proceed to a turn. The turn comes the three of spades, so now ace five of hearts gets there from Trace's perspective. But when he checks it over to me, I don't think he has that hand. I think most likely he has a hand like 10 jack, 10 nine, maybe a hand like pocket eights or pocket sevens that just wants to feel where they are in the hand. But when he slows down and checks, I think now is a good time to go for a bluff. I picked up some more outs on the turn. Unfortunately, it wasn't the three of diamonds. Otherwise, I would have picked up the absolute world. But any five now makes me a wheel. I still could win with any ace or king against a 10 from Trace's perspective. So when he checks over to me, there's $1,300 in the middle. And I looked over at his stack. He has around $1,300 behind. And I decided to rip it all in and put him to the test. Wait, what's that? He has a cranberry behind? Oh man, did I not notice he had a $500 chip? next to his stack. I've obviously never played here before and I'm not gonna blame Trace at all, but I didn't notice he also had a $500 chip 
next to his stack. I thought that was like a dollar or a two dollar chip, something random, maybe even a card protector, but little did I know a $500 chip was sitting there. So that $1,300 or $1,400 stack that I thought it was balloons all the way up to $1,900. And the night of going for massive overbets continues for me because now it's a $1,900 effective jam into that $1,300 pot. It becomes a little bit more scary because if Trace is gonna call off here, I could potentially lose another $500. However, on the bright side, this looks super, super strong. I'm not shoving for pot, I'm shoving for $600 over the size of the pot. So Trace has to keep that in mind. It's a very polarizing jam. And when he checks the turn, I just went for the jugular and I'm gonna put him to the test. Let's not forget that Trace and I played that massive hand earlier where he made the wrong decision and put in the call. I'm hoping he goes 0 for 2 here and folds his cards, which would be the wrong decision again. And the poker gods have been listening to me recently. He folds his cards. I decided to turn over the bluff, ace-king offsuit, and let's roll the table footage to see how Trace reacted when I showed him the bluff. Sorry, Trace, sorry, Trace. It was, it was the head thing. It was, was very strong. scary. Was That's what I was thinking with. Sixes, oh. I thought he had nines. <laughs> he read the back the ones. They're upside down. Oh, oh, I Right, two hands to go. I raise up pocket jacks to $75, and we are going to get ourselves three callers going four ways to the flop, which comes 985 all hearts. Action checks to me, and I decide to check it here. A lot of hands that we lose to here, including 98 suited, pocket fives, pocket eights, pocket nines. Maybe someone has six, seven suited for the straight. And then again, someone could have ace nine with the ace of hearts, ace 10 with the ace of hearts. There's just so many hands that can put a ton of pressure on us. So I decided to check and see what the button does. He doesn't check behind, that is Trip. Good player here from Texas A&M and he bets out for $150. And now the guy with the best head of hair, Alex, decides to come in for a min raise to $300. And as if I wasn't already intimidated by his luscious locks, his min raise here from the straddle position is definitely screaming strength. At this point, I'm putting him on no less than a flush. So I decide to pretty quickly fold my pocket jacks. You guys can let me know down below before you see the results of this hand, what you guys think of folding pocket jacks when you're faced with a bet on the button and then a raise a min raise, I should say, from the under the gun straddle position. I get out of the way, but uh, let's run this out when Trip puts in the call on the flop. I gotta see what happened in this hand. Hopefully it goes to showdown so I can let you guys know if this was a good or bad fold. On the turn five of clubs, Alex rips it all in for around $700. Trip folds and Alex tells us that he had a flush. So great news for us, we folded pocket jacks with a jack of hearts. Of course, we could have sucked out on the river. Of course, we could have sucked on the river with any jack, any five, or any heart, but still, folding when you are behind, can't be too mad about that. And with that, ladies and gentlemen and degenerates, we are moving into the last hand of the night, ace, queen of spades, and I raise it up to $30 from the plus one position. Alex on the button comes in for a raise to $100 and I put in the call. We are going heads up out of position to a flop, which comes pretty great, ace, nine, eight with one spade. I check it over to Alex and he goes for a pretty large bet of $150. I'm going nowhere, I put in the call, off to the turn we go, which comes the three of clubs. I decide to check call another bet on this turn. This time it is a larger sizing of $200 but smaller in relation to the size of the pot. After the dealer puts the chips in the middle, we see a jack of hearts on the river. Not exactly the best card because queen 10 and uh, ace jack now have us beat. Both hands we had beat on the turn. But when it goes check check on the river, we feel pretty great about our hand. I table ace queen just to get shown the effective nuts in this one. Ace king offsuit, Alex is taking it down. Surprised he didn't go for one small street of value on the river. I guess he was a little bit scared if I went for a check raise, he'd probably have to fold his ace king, but that's neither here nor there. He's taking down that nearly $1,000 pot. And with that, this vlog from Joker's Aggie Land here in College Station, AKA Texas A&M has come to a close. Thanks for watching, let's bring it to the outro. All right, we are wrapping up this fun video from College Station, Texas. It was a fun weekend. I ended up playing some poker and got into that game for 1200, immediately doubled up off of Dylan, and then topped up an additional $5,000. It was matched to stack. I wanted to get some money on the table. We ended up cashing out for a profit of 16. dollars 
50 in four hours. I got out for $7,800 in a pretty wild game. If you guys wanna play and you're in the College Station area, hit up Gabe, hit up Trace, check out their room. It's called Jokers in Aggieland. A lot of fun action down there in College Station. If you guys own some other rooms across the country, let me know in Instagram DMs or down in the comments. I'm definitely apt to come out and check it out. Or if you just have a fun home game with some uh, action players, I'll definitely put you guys on the map. If you guys live in Phoenix, I have a meetup game November 12th at 4 p.m. Gila Lone Butte, the info was uh, in the video. I made a cool montage about that. And then also, if you guys want to come out to the Bahamas, December 3rd to the uh, 15th, I believe, I will be there battling into some massive prize pools with Tony Parker, Sergio Aguero, I think Botez is going. A lot of super cool people. So who knows, you guys could become a millionaire in December before Christmas. That's at least the goal we can all hope. If you guys are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave a like, definitely helps out the channel. We are approaching 1 million subscribers. I'm gonna do a recap as to how that all happened so fast. Get a lot of comments saying that I bought subs and all that stuff, but uh, that's not the case. It's all shorts and uh, I'll do a uh, recap probably in the next few videos of uh, how that all happened. Good luck on the felt, you guys. I'll catch you in the next video as always. Peace. Is that Wolf King Poker?